Hello, this is Justin Wolf, Product Manager for the Starlight Visual Information System, or Viz. In this short demonstration, I'll be showing you some of the standard features of Viz that can assist you in computer and network security applications. In the scenario that follows, we're playing the part of a network security administrator who has been advised of a computer on the network that has recently been rebooting on its own. We have access to three sources of information, a database of network flow information, a set of syslog messages, and a list of employees. Following this scenario, I'll show how Starlight's social network analysis tools can help you analyze network information to identify key points in traffic flows. To begin, I've loaded a set of syslog messages. These messages came from a Splunk server and include a combination of snort alerts, Unix syslog entries, and Windows event log messages. Since I know the computer that's been rebooting is a Windows system, and I know that Windows makes an entry each time it starts that the event log is started, I'll search for messages containing the words event log started. Starlight has collected messages matching my query into a record set, which is how Viz groups collections of records. We can see here that several messages match the query, but if we sort by time, we note that the first one is logged by a machine called Harley. This is the name of the machine in question. I see that the machine restarted just after 2.35 in the afternoon. I'm interested in network traffic that occurred just prior to the reboot, so I'll use Harley's IP address to query my database of network traffic. Starlight hooks into almost any database through the use of its ODBC connector. Based on the SQL query programmed into this module, Starlight will bring up a dialog allowing the user in Viz to specify their query using multiple fields. In this case, I can restrict the results to various source and destination IPs and between traffic start and end times. I want to know about traffic flowing to Harley, so I'll put that IP address in the destination IP field. I also want to restrict the traffic to just what happened during 2 o'clock, so I'll put 2 p.m. in the start field and 3 p.m. in the end field. This results in 378 records coming from my database, which I can use to build a network. Since I'm only interested in seeing what happened before Harley reset, I'll turn on Starlight's temporal filter and set it to 2.34 and 45 seconds. Next, I'll tell Viz to build a network view of this traffic using the source and destination IPs. The view initially comes up blank because there was no traffic to Harley in the 15 second window currently selected in the temporal filter. As we start to drag the filter to earlier times though, we see that another machine connected to Harley. I can open this record by clicking on the connection and see that this connection was on port 445, a common file sharing port for the Windows operating system. This isn't uncommon on our network, so I'll slide the filter window a little further back in time. As I drag the filter past 2.27 p.m., I see a large number of connections between these two computers. I could investigate these one at a time by clicking on them, but instead I'll use a different color encoding that shows destination ports as a range of colors. Now I can see that it looks like the other computer conducted a port scan of Harley just a few minutes before the port 445 traffic and the reboot. To expand my search, I'll gather all the network flow information I have for the hour. Rather than just add all this at once to my original query, I'll use Starlight's built-in query tool to initially narrow down the records to just those concerning these two computers, Harley and its attacker. Now I'll add these records to my original query. When I do this, Viz shows that the network view is out of date, so I'll rebuild it and can now see some other computers on the network. Since I don't see anything unusual here, I'll start sliding my filter window a little further back in time. Now I can see a connection from the attacking computer to an external IP address, dot .121, in the lower left. I can see that it's a connection on port 80, the port typically used by web browsers. 
When I attempt to connect to it in a web browser, though, I get no response. Let's look a little further back. Now, at about 2.21, I see a connection to another external IP address in the top of my view, .123. I recognize this as an IP address of a spear phishing site targeting members of a local credit union. At this point, I'm suspecting that the user of the 124 computer fell for one of these attacks, and the site caused the computer to connect to the 121 address, which could have continued the attack internally with a port scan against Harley. Now I'll go forward in time a little, and see what happened after Harley rebooted. We can see that it connected to both these external computers within seconds of restarting. We can use another color encoding to show us different information, this time on quantity of data transmitted to the destination computer. We've set this encoding up such that almost all connections will be encoded in green, but exceptional transmission sizes will appear in yellow or red. We can now easily see that the connection between Harley and 123 falls into this range. By clicking on the connection, we can confirm that Harley sent over 200k to the external computer. This is something that's unusual because web connections typically involve receiving information, not sending it. Since I also have some employee information, I can load that by dragging the spreadsheet file into Starlight. Now that I have that loaded, I want to see who is associated with the two internal computers involved in this event. To do this, I'll start by browsing the records associated with the unknown external computer .123 and dragging them onto the Knowledge Manager, Starlight's link charting tool. Here we see the two connections to .123 and the port scan and other traffic between the attacking computer and Harley. We can add more information to this chart by selecting the internal computers and selecting Add Related Data. Since this also grabs all the other various computers these machines connected to, I can quickly remove them from the chart using the grid on the left. To do this, I'll sort the grid by the number of connections to each node and remove all the nodes that were connected to by only one other computer. Now I can easily see that Harley is owned by Corey Tadenfer, and the attacking computer is Ginger Gossman's. We now have a pretty clear picture of what happened just before Harley rebooted at 2.35 p.m., and can start putting together a report of our analysis. Since we show you how to produce a report in our other videos, I'll skip that part of this demonstration. Instead, I want to briefly show you how to use Starlight's social network analysis tools to better understand your computer and network information. Here I've loaded another project that has a large set of network alerts. Each alert recorded the source and destination addresses of the nodes involved. I've built a chart in the Knowledge Manager based on this information, which you can see displayed. If I zoom into the middle of this, it looks pretty messy. But what I want to know is which computers comprise the backbone of this network. To do this quickly, I can click on the Betweenness Centrality tool. This ranks each node by the total number of shortest paths that pass through it. By sorting the grid on the left by this ranking, I can quickly select the top five nodes of this network. To see how these are connected, I can then click on the Shortest Paths tool. I can take this information to another tab in the Knowledge Manager for further analysis. By doing this, I've reduced the number of nodes in my network from thousands to just 15, and not just any 15, but the most important ones. This concludes our brief introduction to using Starlight for computer and network security applications. If you have any more questions or would like a personal demonstration, please contact us at sales at futurepointsystems.com. Thank you for watching.